So as you guys know, I am a season ticket holder at Preston North End and that means I've got to experience each set of away fans visiting Deepdale this season. And in today's video, we're going to be ranking each championship club and what I made of their away support visiting Deepdale this season. Now obviously this is going to be affected by a variety of factors. This isn't an overall ranking on your fan base. It's literally just taking that 90 minutes in isolation of how you were when you're at Preston compared to everyone else in the championship. And things like travelling numbers, whether it was a Tuesday night, if you scored or not and there were limbs in the away and all that sort of thing will affect this list. So don't take it too seriously and don't take it to heart if I do place your team a little bit lower down. At the end of the day, it's all just for a little bit of fun. But I would like to know in your personal experience who have been the best and worst travelling fans to your stadium this season. Let me know down below. So these are each of the categories we're going to be dropping each championship club into. S, A, B, C and D tier. Now before we do jump into the tier list, there were two home matches that I did miss this season. Um, so I won't be able to give a fair ranking for those away fans. Bristol City at home did did miss that one unfortunately and also Cardiff as well uh, me slacking there a little bit with the home matches but I went to every other match but apologies to Bristol City and Cardiff fans I won't be able to give you a fair ranking because I wasn't there Let's kick things off with the Hull fans though. They were the first set of travelling fans to come to Deep Dell this season, bringing just over 1,600 fans and a solid following all in all for Hull. Weirdly enough, we played Hull on the first game of the previous season as well at Deep Dell. On that occasion, they beat us 4-1. I remember it being a, a, a cracking looking away day for Hull fans at that time. This one, maybe not so as much. The game ended nil-nil and we did have a series of consecutive goalless draws at the start of the season. But despite all of that, it was a solid following nonetheless, made a decent bit of noise. I'm going to chuck Hull fans into the B tier, albeit there weren't any you know, limbs or anything mental happening in the away end because of the game. Rotherham brought just over 600 fans there. Now, this one was a midweek match and also ended goalless, so wasn't the busiest of away ends or in terms of the noise or anything like that. It was a bit of a weird match, really. Preston having loads of the ball, loads of chances, but Rotherham defending really well. Um, over 600 fans on a midweek match isn't that shabby, but for noise and everything, I'm going to put Rotherham into the C tier, um, I think, which is fair compared to all the other sets of fans we had travelling. After that, we had the Watford fans who brought just over 1,100 fans, and believe it or not, it was another goalless draw. We kicked off this season at Deepdale with three consecutive consecutive nil-nillers. Um, I remember Watford missing a few sitters in that one to be fair, um, which the Watford fans weren't too happy about. Um, over 1,000 fans though, travelling down from around London is not too shabby um, especially compared to what some of the other clubs um, from around that sort of area brought to us this season. Noise wasn't a load of it, but it did finish as a goalless draw in the end, so you can't really hold that against them. I'm going to chuck Watford into the B tier. Um, solid mid-table overall, I'd say, for that away following. After that, we get to the Birmingham fans they brought over 2,000 to Deepdale this season. This was actually the first goal we got to see at Deepdale this year. And it wasn't a Preston goal, it was Birmingham. Um, in the past, I have seen Blues bring in bigger numbers. But in terms of the fans that did come and the noise they made, impressive stuff. Um, up until that point, Birmingham were definitely the best set of away supporters to come to Deepdale. And all in all, I'm going to drop them into the A category. Uh, looked like a fun day out overall for those. Birmingham fans. We played Burnley in midweek and did manage to snatch a point from them, but understandably so, it was a packed out away end over 5,600 in there in the end. The first half atmosphere, I remember being absolutely electric. It was great stuff from both the home and away fans. Second half, things did quieten down a little bit because of how the game sort of unfolded. It was literally just Burnley passing it around us, and so the atmosphere did lull a little bit, but when Burnley and all their fans properly got behind them and they were in full voice one of the loudest sets of supporters to come to deep all this season um in no doubt about that really so all in all i'm going to chuck burnley into the top category they were amongst the best fans to come to deep Dell this season uh, like i said packing out that away and making a load of noise and um, especially when they scored after that to sheffield united they brought over 4400 fans to deep Dell, and of the sides that aren't in Lancashire, that was one of the biggest away followings we had coming to Deep Dell this season. They did beat us as well, uh, worth factoring in, scored a couple of goals and overall looked like a fun away end to be in. Sheffield United always tend to travel really well when coming to Deep Dell, you know, regularly taking over 4,000 away fans and you get the atmosphere that goes along uh, with that because of it. The result definitely helped as well, but Sheffield United also amongst the best away fans, I think, to come to Deep Dell this season, going to chuck them in to the top tier with Burnley. 
After that, we get to the West Brom fans bringing just over 700 for a midweek match. Now, in years gone by, West Brom have had some really good travelings to Deepdale, and I've always been quite impressed with the Baggies fans, but the time they came to Preston in this season, it just looked like a bit of a miserable away into being, I'm not going to lie. Preston ended up winning the match. The West Brom fans were just seething with Bruce by this point. They wanted him gone. I think in the end, Bruce lasted just one game after that Preston loss, but you could tell that a lot of the Baggies fans were just sort of checked out by this point and that sort of came across with um, how quiet it was at times in that away end because yeah they were just fed up with everything really I think they were in the relegation zone at the time it looked like um, a bit of a miserable one so overall for West Brom uh, for midweek 700 fans it's all right but I'd usually expect them to bring more but the context is important I'm going to put them into the C tier um, all in all after that, we then had Stoke visiting Deepdale, bringing over 3,200 fans. Really good away performance. One of the best I think we've seen at Deepdale this season. Alex Neal just tactically got it spot on. They beat us 2-0. I have to say, really impressed with the away fans. Uh, the travelling numbers were good, over 3,000 fans. The noise they made for the amount of fans they took as well was also really quite impressive. And definitely amongst some of the best fans I think we've had at Deepdale all season. At least an A tier for Stoke, but I actually think I'd bump them up maybe one more into that top tier. Really impressed with what I saw from them this season. The result definitely helped, but there was plenty of noise and once again looked like a really fun away to be in. Then we get to the Middlesbrough fans. They brought to just over 2,800 fans. Now, if you watch my ranking for Championship away fans from last season, I did have Middlesbrough as hands down the best set of travelling supporters that came to Deepdale. It was on the final day of last season. Uh, they packed out the away end and... Even when they were losing in that game, it was just a bit of a mental atmosphere, really good travelling numbers. This time around, not quite as good as that, but the context of the season at this point is important to remember. I think they were in the relegation zone when we played them, um, so it was a bit of a weird time to be playing Middlesbrough, really. It was also Michael Carrick's first game in charge as well. So I don't think they were quite as good as they were last year, but still very impressive um, and made good. Uh, I made a good amount of noise for the fans they brought as well. But I think when they were sort of, you know, when they eventually lost that game, it was a little bit downbeat because they were in the relegation zone at the time. But overall for Borough fans, I took them into the A tier. Still impressive following. After that, we had the Swansea fans coming to Deepdale. They brought just 428 fans. So it was the smallest away allocation that travelled to Deepdale this season. But fair play to all the Swansea fans who did make this trip. It's an absolute trek coming from Swansea to Preston and then back in and can Considering this was a midweek match, uh, which they went on to lose, Preston won one 0 I think we played Swansea at a point in the season where uh, they weren't on the best of runs. But as it was the lowest allocation that came to Deep Bill this season, we didn't hear that much noise from them because they ended up losing. I'm going to have to drop them into the bottom tier. Apologies, Swansea fans. Next then we had the Millwall fans, they brought just over 650 away fans to Deepdale, turned out to be a cracking match, Zian Fleming absolutely running the show, they beat us 4-2 and yeah just a bit of a basketball game in the end. In terms of the Millwall fans who came down, uh, they're a bit of a unique one Millwall because they don't have that many chants but they do make quite a bit of noise with the whole male thing um, that they keep on going for quite a while so it's a unique atmosphere, uh, not the biggest travelling numbers coming up from London this season though I think around the C tier would probably be fair uh, for Millwall this season compared to the other clubs who I've got around them and above them based on the atmosphere after that we had the QPR fans who brought around 500 fans to Deep Dell this season so once again not the biggest allocation coming up from London they did end up winning this match the only game they won under Neil Critchley uh, typically so was against North End now I do have sympathies with QPR fans especially the ones that did make it to Deep Dell because I believe the game was taking place on a day where there were train strikes and disruptions so it would have been the right hassle for the QPR fans to have got up to Deep Dell so fair play to all 500 uh, who did make the trip up once again yeah, not the loudest of away ends, but with it being the train strikes and coming from London, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and I'll drop them in the C tier. Have that to Huddersfield, a solid following from them, just over a thousand. This game was on Boxing Day and they ended up beating us. Uh, one of their few victories under Fotheringham. And fair play to all the Huddersfield fans who did make that trek on Boxing Day, following a team who 
up until that point were showing no real signs of life but they pulled off a shock win and they made a decent amount of noise and there were some decent limbs um, in that away and when they ended up winning um, I took Huddersfield into at least the B tier because yeah they were watching some pretty turgid football up until that point so fair play to everyone that did come to Deepdale and also the fact that we played Huddersfield about four times this season twice in the cup and twice in the league as well so Preston Huddersfield fans I think you're just sick of each other by this point after that to Norwich who brought really solid travelling numbers actually just under 1,000 in the end. It was a cracking game from a Norwich perspective. They put four goals past us, one of the first games they had under David Wagner, and absolutely played us off the park. Wasn't the rowdiest of away ends, but they made a decent amount of noise, especially considering the goals they scored and the really solid numbers they brought as well, considering how far that trek actually is. So with Norwich, I'd say it was a good good following from them. Uh, I took them into the B tier this year. Luton Town, they brought around 500 fans in this one was a midweek match as well so that will have influenced things a uh, bit of a crazy match they absolutely dominated this one Elijah Adebayo missed two or three guilt edge chances and they should have played us off the park but somehow we managed to scrape a one all draw in the end uh, once again not the balmiest of away ends but solid numbers considering it was um, a midweek match bringing around 500 could drop them into the round the C tier I think Wigan obviously it was a local one but they brought 3,700 to Deepdale this season and for the numbers they brought I actually thought made a good amount of noise we ended up beating them 2-1 uh, but everyone was very much behind Maloney at that point even with their chances of survival being fairly thin and do you know what? I was fairly impressed with Wigan fans this year. I think they made more noise this year than they have done in previous years. Um, I put Wigan into the A tier, I think. Get a bit of stick every now and again, Wigan, uh, for their sort of home fans and travelling numbers and things like that. But I thought I was fairly impressed with them this year. After that for Coventry, they brought around 850 fans to Deep Dell. This was a midweek match and it did end goalless. So, um, I mean, in the past I've seen Coventry uh, taking some really good allocations to Deep Dell and the game probably didn't justify or was reasoning to be that much of a rowdy away end. But for the numbers Coventry brought, especially for a midweek match, I did think they made um, some pretty good noise, to be fair to them. And overall, I dropped them into at least the B tier. Uh, it wasn't the biggest of followings from them, but considering it was midweek um, and they made quite a bit of noise for a goalless draw, I think that's about fair. After that for Blackpool, where do I drop them? They brought just over 2,000 fans, which was, of course, the max capacity because we did give them um, a heavily reduced capacity after we've had a little bit of a ticket war going back and forth between you know what they've allocated us at Bloomfield and we keep biting back and doing the same um, when they come ahead and visit. I mean, pre-game and up until the first North End goal went in, it was an electric atmosphere from both ends of the ground, but it very much, I think, sunk into the Blackpool fans that it could get a little bit messy after that first goal went in. And then when the goals kept going from Preston, you know, we ended up putting three past them. It did fall silent um, in the second half, and probably sooner than that, actually. I think all Blackpool fans will admit that. So, Blackpool, I'd chuck them into the B tier, uh, probably, this season. Really good noise at the start, but quick things quickly died off after that, as you'd expect. Reading, they brought just over 400 fans to Deepdale. It was a Saturday, and of the Saturday kickoffs that we've had this season, Reading did bring the smallest allocation of away fans. So, Swansea brought the overall fewest, but that was a midweek match, and and for Reading, I'm going to have to drop them into the bottom tier, I think. Fair play to all the Reading fans that did make that trip because from a Reading perspective, it was a turgy game of football. Literally 11 men parked behind the ball. It was peak Paul in Spall by this point and I think all the Reading fans have sort of checked out from that and what in has gone by that point, so... They did get to see a goal, to be fair, which came against the run of play, but overall, it wasn't the um, liveliest of away ends. I'll put it that way. Blackburn, they brought just under 5,000 fans, so was one of the bigger allocations, but obviously that you'd expect that uh, with it being a local match. A crazy game in the end. Blackport, Blackburn thinking they won it, only for North End to go ahead and score with the last kick of the game to level it up at 1-1. One -one. Bit of a weird atmosphere, really, because it sort of went in lulls um, in the away end. I think when everyone was on song for Blackburn, they did make quite a bit of noise and there was, um, you know, there were great limbs when Blackburn eventually did take the lead. But I also did sense quite a few nerves in that away end as well. There were quite a few periods where things felt a little bit quieter as so much was on the line I suppose from both teams so I don't think Blackburn were top tier away fans but the travelling numbers they brought along with the decent limbs I would chuck them into the A tier maybe and give them the benefit of the doubt but there were times when 
things did go a little bit quiet. Finishing things off then with Sunderland and without a doubt they are going in the S tier. Uh, hands down the best set of away fans to have come to Deepdale this season in terms of the numbers they brought. They sold out that away end obviously. Scenes at the end getting into the playoffs on the final day in the manner of which they did as well. The limbs when they scored. Uh, the rendition of the national anthem before kickoff was out as well was absolutely spectacular and just looked like an absolutely booming away end. So no questions in my mind whatsoever. They were easily the best at Deepdale. But guys, there we have it. Those are my thoughts on each set of away fans to come to Deepdale this season. Like I said, this one is just for a little bit of fun, so don't take it too seriously. But I would like to hear from you who have been the best and worst sets of away fans to have come to your ground this season. Let me know down below. Alright, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next one.